Now, women struggling with involuntary childlessness are often victimized and stigmatized and sometimes disinherited. They often have to live in solitude, with some still believing that carrying a curse, that, that they carry a curse and will bring them a bad luck. In part two of the special series, The Silent Pandemic, Safina Cheng Oma unpacks how this form of inhuman treatment infringes the rights of women who are involuntarily childless and how their participation in public life is limited. The pain and agony childless women go through, especially in an African society where procreation is highly regarded, is immeasurable. Some use my childlessness to abuse me, saying that I should not discuss other people's children, not knowing I also desire to have my own. But God did give me. And it be a neka. Rosalyn Orua is a women rights advocate and the executive director of the Rona Widows and Orphans Center. She tells me she has worn both the shoes of being a widow and being a woman without her own child and knows where they pinch most. I lost my first marriage at 28 because of infertility. My mother had to return dowry. I underwent a lot of surgery. I've almost lost my life at uh, the surgical table almost three or four times. Um, for a very for a period of 10 years in my 20s to 30s i i wondered how brutal my first marriage was because of master's infertility i assume i had children i don't think it would have gone the way it went <laughs> After making a deliberate choice not to let circumstance define her, Rosalind decided to give vulnerable children a home, and today she calls herself a proud mother of 27. When I discovered that uh, you don't have to, uh, not every woman is supposed to bear children through the, you know, child labor. You can labor differently. And so uh, my story is one of those unique ones where I have healed from my pain and I've decided to uh, bear child labor in a different way. When you raise 27 children, you labor every day. You labor for food, you labor for resources, you labor for medical care. In the African culture, when a couple lacks children, it is the woman who often bears the blame Dr. Boniface Obai Kamau, a reproductive health expert at Ambira Sub-County Hospital, explains why men often shy away from the subject of infertility. It's easier to uh, investigate the male than the female because there are many investigations to be done on the female and there are many causes that will cause infertility in the female than in the male. Okay. Yes. Why do you think men are shying away from, from coming for fertility checkups? I think they fear discovering that they are not able to give pregnancy. <laughs> Matters in fertility are very private. They are uh, known, but uh, the individual stories are very painful. They are full of stigma, full of sociocultural undertones, and a lot of unrecognition in the family structure because a woman's worth in the African culture is measured by the number of children she births. So if you have no children, you are as much as worthless. The demographic and health surveys of 1994 to 2000 shows that 2.5% of women aged 25 to 49 years who have had sexual intercourse have never been pregnant and 3.1% have never given birth. This is, however, not the real situation. With the stigma and the myths around infertility, very few couples end up seeking treatment and as such, many cases go unreported. Stigma also encourages silence, leading to late diagnosis and sometimes lack of treatment. The problem couples keep on trying, keep on trying to get and uh, blaming each other. And by the time they come to the hospital, uh, you get they come when they are already approaching menopause, for example, the woman. And uh, usually they come too late. But for many women who have had the privilege of getting a timely diagnosis, treatment options are expensive. 
They told me I conceived, but I miscarried, and that I had a complication in my womb and needed corrective surgery, a surgery I could not afford until my husband died. Some rogue religious leaders have also used the desperation of children to mint money out of their congregants. Yeah, you, smear, you smear some oil on somebody and you tell her that the next day she will conceive. Maybe if it goes for a year and she doesn't conceive, then you automatically you are a fake pastor. So when we are doing these things as uh, the people who are concerned, let us avoid such practices because they are not to the glory of God. Dr. Kamau also decries the shortage of facilities and experts to conduct such fertility treatments. We used to have very few doctors uh, doing those procedures, and that was in Nairobi. Uh, but right now, we at least are able, mothers are able to access this service, or couples are able to access this service. Uh, although in Siaya, we do not have... Like where we are in Wagoma village here, <laughs> I don't know whether there's a guy in Bono, Bondo. I don't know whether, this, uh, even if you just have a growth or ovarian cyst, or matters to hormonal imbalance, will you even access uh, medical care? You know, reproductive health issues are also very complicated. The spaces are also very unfriendly. Another challenge is lack of awareness on alternative treatments for infertility. Jane, for instance, laughs at my mention of in vitro fertilization. <laughs> I have just heard people talking about it and that sometimes a child can be carried in a different womb or a man can feel labor pain, but it was just talk in person. These women may not have gone through the pangs of labor, but the stigma they have been through is enough emotional pain. Regardless, they opt to remain resilient, believing that having no child does not mean that you have no value. They believe that a woman should not be denied her rights just because she cannot bring forth life. Reporting for Channel One News from Wagoma Village in Bondo Sub County of Siaya County, I am Safin Aching Oma.